Hey, hi everyone, this is Vivek and in this third video part of this particular series, we're going to talk about DSC on tree and this is going to be a conceptual overview of what this DSC on tree and what kind of it enables us to. Now, this is the third part. So there has been two previous videos. So if you have not checked them out, do check them out. If you're new to DSU or like union finance and these kind of things, uh, I have also made a basic introductory video, which you can kind of watch through and understand how things work, right? So let's get into DSU on tree and let's try to understand what all of these are all about. So DSU on tree, like we're going to learn using a particular problem, uh, which is going to be this, that for every node in the tree, we need to find the number of distinct values in the subtree of that particular node. So if we like understand what we are trying to do is every node over here has a value, which is some color value, maybe something like that. And for every node, let's say for this node, we want to find the number of distinct values in its subtree. So if we see this particular subtree, it's two, three, two, four. So the distinct values are two, three, four. So the answer is three for this node. It's three for this nodes. It includes one and five as well. So it's going to be five for this node. It's just four and five. So it's two. Right. So this is what we need to find for every node. Obviously for leaf node, these values are going to be one for this node. It's also going to be three, right? And so on. So we can actually find it for every node like this, but what we need to do is do it for a bigger tree. Let's say n is up to 10 to the power 5, which is the number of nodes in the tree is up to 10 to the power 5, right? So how do we solve this particular problem? Now to understand what we're trying to do over here is like what we are going to do is for every node, we have this value, right? And we try to see that, okay, uh, finding out the answers for this is pretty easy once like for the leaf nodes, once they are done, we don't really have any work of these numbers, right? So what we can do is maybe we can push them up and maybe merge it with these, this particular value and then create this set two, three, right? So this now has its values ready. If you push all the distinct numbers that were there in this subtree, this in this subtree, and then you push them up and merge it over here, you have all the distinct things over here, right? And you also have their answer ready. This also has its one answer. This answer has three. Now you push these things up. So there is this set, which is two, which is its original set. You have three coming in from over here. And there's this bigger set, which, which kind of got created using merging the subtrees inside it, uh, which is two, three, four. So you merge all these things and then this also becomes two, three, four, right? And you also know the answer for this node is then three. Similarly, this you can find as one, you, you push this five up in this, you get this as the collection, right? You first of all, convert these individual numbers into a collection of the single number, maybe at the start, and then you push them up to merge them into the parent, right? Then you have these two things ready for this. You now know the answer is two, and then you push them all up into this thing. So there are these three sets, one, two, three, four, five, like these elements are there. And then they get merged all together into a single element, which is one, two, three, four, five. And you can say that the answer for this is five, right? So this is the main idea that you are pushing the things up and merging the sets all together. If you understand, we just converted these single values into a set, right? And then we are, what we are doing is essentially merging the sets, right? We are merging this set with this. We are merging this set with this. We are merging this set with this. We are merging all of this set with this, this set, this, this, and so on. And the number of set merges that happen is essentially exactly equal to the number of edges that you have, which is the, in a tree is N minus one. So in N minus one merges are there, like merges or unites are there, right? And every time we need to tell, we need to find that for the current set, what is the number of distinct elements that is there, right? Now, this is actually a very natural problem. Like given sets, you have to merge sets and find the number of distinct element. Now, this is a very, very natural problem that we can solve using DSUs. Uh, by no means, I'm saying that this is the most efficient way or uh, we cannot do something else. Mo like this problem, finding distinct for every subtree can actually be done with, uh, I think, Euler door on tree as well. Like you can convert these into ranges and then find the number of distinct element in ranges. That is also a very interesting idea. But uh, you can actually solve it with Euler drone on tree or something like that as well. But uh, what we are trying to learn right now is how do you think about DSUs in these kind of scenarios, right? DSUs on trees in general. So the main idea was this, that uh, you have this smaller sets, which are there for the subtrees. You keep merging them and keep building the things in this layer by layer setup, all the leaves first, then these, this node, then this node gets created and then this nodes get created. It's like level by level kind of creation. And essentially we are just merging sets. So we have to do that efficiently. Every element, there are N elements and then everything gets merged only once. So over here, what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly like talk about how we can do this. Uh, there are multiple ways to implement this. I'm going to talk about more uh, later on in the slides and I'm going to give you some references to read more if you want, but I'm going to give you a quick implementation as well that you can kind of use for very general stuff. 
in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having only, let's say, uh, this setup where we build, we, we first convert these numbers into its individual sets, right? And have their set IDs. And then we can kind of like quickly do a DFS, wherein in the DFS, we can kind of uh, like for all child, like for all child, what we can do is we can do a DFS so that it's all childs get initialized. And then this child, we can merge, like let's say this X, we can merge this child set into the X. Like we can get them merged all together, right? For this element set, we can get it merged with the child set. And then if all the child's corresponding set are merged, then we have this set's distinct answer. We can get the answer over here and then return this element set to the parent. And that way we can kind of handle all of these things, right? So this is what we would be doing. Uh, and like, in, I thought I could go ahead and maybe explain things in uh, on drawing, but what I thought was it would be better if I just show you how to code all of these things and maybe talk about um, how you can see these things in problems. In general, when you have such subtree kind of problems uh, where we have to find something like distinct or so, like uh, some property for the whole subtree, then we can kind of use this method. So let's go ahead and quickly code this up. I have quickly set up the basic stuff for this. Like we have the values taken up into, into the array and then have taken the graph or the tree structure all together. And uh, we want to do the rest of the things, right? So what I'm going to understand is uh, for every node, we have to, a set, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly create a set of elements because we need to find the distinct. So set is natural choice for that. Um, uh, like colors, I guess I'm just going to keep colors, which is this and the colors of I is going to contain I in the start. What I'm essentially doing is, uh, what I'm, uh, keeping is the I it set contain the number I and sorry, the I it set contains the number value of I, right. And the value of I is going to be equal to I. So I, sh I think I should go ahead and take a new variable over here. Some like maybe integer X and then insert it. So whatever the color ball that this particular node has this, whatever color, this new distinct number that we are kind of tracking off this node contains, we insert it into this set ith set and the ith number like ith numbers representation is currently in the ith set. That's what we mean by value of I. And uh, we can kind of build the tree and then maybe do a DFS. Let's try and write the DFS. So I'm going to take the node NN and its parent PP. And that's what we just need for this particular scenario. And what I will do is I will just return the set, which contains the distinct elements uh, that we have merged till now. So integer current set, which we have for this node is going to be equal to the val of the NN, right? This is the current set, which of this node, right? Now for auto v in g of nn for all the neighbors if v is not equal to the parent right we do a dfs right this is just the standard recurrence that we use for dfs in trees for v and uh, its parent is going to be this node right and it's going to return a set right what we're going to do do that whatever the like the subtree returns as the set that was merged we're going to merge that particular set with the current set so current set is equal to merge the current set and this note that these are not really the full set values, but just the index of that set element from these columns, right? So the passing them takes order one. You can also use the pointers and stuff, but I think that's just over complicating stuff, right? So we make the DFS call and we merge it with the current one. Once we are done with it, this particular nodes current set, like uh, maybe we can save the answer for every node in a separate variable which is going to be this and we can maybe answer of I of NN is going to be equal to the colors in the current set dot size and then return current set, right? That's all that we all need for this particular problem. And the last thing that is left out is the merge operation wherein we take void sorry, integer merge integer set a and set b which two sets to merge if and we use the small to large technique so we say that if uh calls of a dot size is less than calls of b dot size then we swap a and b and now obviously a is always bigger than b so we go ahead and for 
auto v in calls of b a dot insert v right and uh, we are going to clear off the b because all those elements needs to like move around i don't want to create more memory i mean if we just remove them and insert then the whole memory usage is going to be n uh, log n uh, sorry n but if you don't remove them then it's going to be n log n as similar to the time complexity so we're going to do the b dot clear as well just sorry not really b dot clear it's going to be calls of a we insert into the set a from b and calls of b colors of b got got cleared off and then we return a because that's what contains now the all the elements that is being merged out of the two and that is what will be merged out and this is how you can simply code this up i can quickly call around tfs of one with zero and that will just save the answers for every node i can just go ahead and maybe for integer i equal to zero i equal to i is less than i is, sorry one i is less than equal to n i plus plus i can go ahead and uh, see out the answer of i that should be enough right so this is how we can solve this particular problem very easily i mean very very basic code just build the sets merge them using small to large and if you think about time complexity this dfs is order n obviously and this merging operation takes n log n right uh, like we know that if you do small to large merging it's going to take n log n but we are doing it with sets so it's n log n multiplied by the insert and clear operations insert and remove operations that is that is there for the data structure being used so it's log n for that as well so it's n log square n so this whole code is going to be n log square n uh, which is uh, one of the complexities that we can solve this in actually we can actually do this better than this as well i mean if you use uh, some better structures maybe like users use the same structure to kind of traverse through the array and there are multiple different implementations but uh, this is like the very very naive way but if you want to understand what dac on tree is this is what we are trying to do okay now let's quickly move around and talk about next thing which is this particular blog which you can kind of go through and read i will kind of add the link to this particular blog below this in the description you can go through this particular element and you can see that there are multiple different ideas on the same thing this is this dc on tree where i started out and learned these things uh, so this kind of has the same idea but has multiple different implementations that you can choose from there is this idea where you have the same data structure where you can like call a smaller dfs which needs to get cleared off and when you call when you have the bigger child then you don't clear the data structure so this kind of ideas are there in this particular uh, like code so you can kind of read that and learn a better way to implement things for this one and that that way you will learn a lot from this particular blog but the whole dsu idea on tree is what we talked about just now have sets for each nodes merge the sets n minus one edges so n minus one merges and n elements anyways for one for every node so that gives us the same kind of an heuristics of um, a union find altogether right or uh, small to large merging of n elements right so that's i guess all for this particular video as well as this particular series if you did like the content of this particular series do give the like to all the all the videos and subscribe to the channel definitely because i think i'm going to be putting more such interesting content all together on this channel and uh, do like let me know in the comments what more you want me to pick ideas from and what what more ideas do you want me to cover maybe things that have really interesting blogs but doesn't really have explanations in videos or maybe things that don't really have blogs but you would love to learn maybe some application ideas ideas maybe some basic stuff i don't know i can pick out anything i have few things in my mind but uh, i would love to get more ideas from you guys because uh, a lot of like i have my, i had my own struggles during my own journey but i think uh, like majority of people have different struggles and uh, like what what i see is if think if something can make a major benefit to a lot of people i'm going to create that particular content right so that's all for this particular video see you all bye bye and thanks for joining